So our next two skills are kind of a part one and part two of the same skill concept, which is solving equilibria problems. And I promise you, if you master this technique, this is the technique that your in-person quiz is going to be on, but this is also the technique that is going to be carried through into the next two learning units. So please do your best to try to master this important technique on how we solve equilibria problems. Okay, so we've got kind of an overall strategy that we have here. And what I'm going to do is break this up into two parts, two different skills. We're going to practice these on two separate days. Uh, and the first part is going to be talking about kind of this first half. But before I do this, I want to highlight that there's two kinds of equilibrium problems that we're likely to see. And I'm going to refer to them as type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is a problem where we're actually going to be solving for an equilibrium constant. We're always going to be using an equilibrium constant in some way, shape, or form in our problems. But sometimes the unknown is going to be the equilibrium constant. And sometimes the unknown is going to be one or more of our reactant or product species. So depending on what we're solving for, just kind of loosely breaks this up into type 1 and type 2 problems. Now, as we've seen with so many of our problems, the level of difficulty often is dependent on how directly information is given to you. And as we'll see here, we're going to be doing a good bit of algebra in this section of Gen Chem. And so it's how easy that algebra is to what we say solve for x. Okay, so this first skill is really on some of the simpler ways that we can solve for x, learning how to use an ice table and kind of walking before we run. Okay, I'm always going to have a consistent strategy when we do these problems so that we always um, have kind of a, a scaffolded way to think through and work through these problems. So if you sort of have that scaffold, you could kind of do this blindfolded, so to speak. So I'm always going to have the same steps, which kind of mirror what we're going to see here. So the first thing is really three steps. It's kind of pre preliminary. It's basically solving um, a balanced or uh, making sure that you start with a balanced chemical equation. Then we're going to write an equilibrium expression. And then we're going to make sure that all of our species are in the right units. Remember, equilibrium constants have molarity or partial pressures. So how we represent things either needs to be molarity as the concentration or atmosphere as the pressure. Okay, so that's kind of the first setup piece here. What I'm going to do here is I've got some problems that we're going to work through, but rather than me taking the time to write, I'm actually going to work through and kind of break them out in pieces here. So you might not have time to fully write everything if that's something you've been doing, or feel free to pause the video so that you can write. But I'm going to spend most of my time kind of explaining in the one or two problems that we'll have as that we go through here. So. Let's imagine this is going to be what I'm calling an easy, like a level one type problem. This is going to be a type one problem because we want to find our K value. And in this case, we're actually given equilibrium concentrations. So, so much of what is important in these problems is learning how to read the problem and know what path we need to take. So let's read through this problem. We're given a balanced chemical equation. So remember, that was our first piece, is we need to start with a balanced chemical equation. The problem could be made more difficult if I gave you the problem in words, and you had to translate those words into chemical formulas, and then had to balance it. Okay, So this problem, we start with a balanced chemical equation. And it tells us that at equilibrium, we have a flask that contains 1.8 moles of hydrogen gas, 1.8 moles of iodine, and then 0 0.520 moles of HI. We want to solve for Kc. So again, this question, what is Kc, tells us that it's a type 1 problem. We're solving for the equilibrium constant. So step 1 is always writing a balanced chemical equation. Step 2 is always writing your equilibrium uh, expression. So that's what we have here. Notice that I could write this as either K or Q, but they both have the same parts to them. And it's going to be products over reactants. So again, there's only one product here, so there's no multiplication of concentrations, but it's raised to powers that are uh, coefficients. And then here we've got the multiplication of concentrations of reactants. Again, no coefficients here, so we don't have any exponents. But note here the difference. When we're talking about K, we need to put in equilibrium expressions. Q 
Q just could represent any concentrations that we have. But this problem tells us that we've got equilibrium concentrations. So if I put in the equilibrium concentrations here, I'm going to get my K value. Now, I cannot put in these values here because these are not concentrations. That's the third step in our three-step strategy here to kind of set up our problem. Balance chemical equation, write your equilibrium expression, and make sure that everything is in the right units, which is either molarity or partial pressures. They gave us the number of moles of each, and then they told us that they were all contained in a 1.5 liter flask. So that means I can figure out the molarities by just taking moles over liters. So that's what this part does, is it basically calculates the molarities of these species by putting the number of moles over the volume of the flask. Note that we've got the same concentration here for H2 and I2 because we started with the same number of moles. Okay. Now the last part is now that I do have these equilibrium concentrations, I do have these molarities, I can go ahead and put them in my equilibrium expression and solve for K. So that's what this last piece is, is I'm putting those equilibrium expressions in and I'm solving for K and my K is listed here as 8.36 times 10 to the minus second. Notice here, this is really important and uh, you, you actually will get points off if you put units in when there's not supposed to be. There are no units in equilibrium constants, okay? So no units that are there. So that's sort of the easiest way. I actually told you what the equilibrium concentrations were. Let's walk through one more problem here, but this time I don't give you all of the equilibrium concentrations. So when we don't have that and we might have some variables that we need to think about, we're going to use an ice table. So we introduced kind of a reaction table where we had ICF in our last learning unit on kinetics. We had a couple problems that we worked through with that, but this is going to be an ICE table. I standing for initial, C standing for change, and then E for equilibrium. So how we move on to this next phase is we're going to put, um, uh, we need to think about whether or not we're at where we want to be. So this is, this is not always what you'll have to do, but we'll talk about this. We might need to do a Q versus K comparison. Are we at, are we at equilibrium? Can we use the values that we have, right? This problem, Q was equal to K. We were at equilibrium because it told us that, okay? If we're not at equilibrium, we need to figure out which way the direction is going to shift. We're going to talk about that in this next problem. And then we need to construct an ice table and solve for X. Okay, so we're going to do one problem to kind of uh, demonstrate how this works. And then our next skill is going to have a little bit more involved methods for solving for X. Okay, so let's talk about how you make an ice table. I'm going to go through this fairly slowly in case this is something that's new for you. So in this case, we're given um, uh, an equation that we have to create from words. So this tells us that we have a, an evacuated vessel. So it's just an empty flask and we're putting a small amount of graphite in there. So we need to know that graphite is solid carbon. And then we're adding carbon dioxide to it and we're going to generate carbon monoxide. So we need to be able to take those words and create a chemical equation and then be able to balance that chemical equation. So once we have a balanced chemical equation, essentially where it's almost like we're writing a little matrix underneath this, we're going to have three rows, each for the initial change and equilibrium concentrations of all of our species. And so columns will be here for each species that's in our balanced chemical equation with the exception of solids and pure liquids because they don't appear in our equilibrium expression. They do not appear in our uh, ice tables, okay? So what we're gonna do here is then put in initial parameters that are given to us. So they tell us that we're adding gaseous CO2 to a pressure of 0.458 atmospheres. So that goes in here. That's the initial concentration of our CO2 gas. You'll note that it's a concentration that's given in atmosphere, so it's a partial pressure. 
It's the only thing that's in there, so that means we have zero carbon monoxide to start. And this is really, really important because this tells us that this is the only way that this reaction can go. We don't really need to do that Q versus K comparison because it can't go in reverse because there's no products, right? This reaction can only go in the forward direction. Now this change column is unique. I don't know how much it's going to go and make carbon monoxide. But when I do know that that's going to happen is that means I'm going to lose some of my carbon dioxide and make some carbon monoxide. And my reaction stoichiometry is going to allow me to recognize that I'm going to make twice as much carbon monoxide as I used up carbon dioxide. Okay, so that's how we propagate values in the change row. Now the equilibrium row is really just a sum of the initial and change cells. So basically when we're adding 0.458 to negative x, it's 0.458 minus x. And then over here we've got 2x. So part of learning how to do these problems is making sure that we're comfortable writing an ice table. Now sometimes you might be able to do some of this in your head and so forth and that's okay, but keep in mind if it's a problem that I'm giving you partial credit for and you don't get the problem right and you don't have something where I can see where your thought process was, I can't really assign partial credit. So part of the reasons why we're going to go through all of these steps here is it allows me to not only give you a, a, a scaffolded way of thinking about doing these problems, but also allows me to assign partial credit if you don't get the correct answer. All right, so that's how we make an ice table. So let's go ahead and then solve this problem. Okay, how do we solve for x? There's lots of different ways we could solve for x. Maybe we're going to be given an equilibrium concentration and we'll be able to actually set that equal to the variable that is in our ice table. We'll see problems where we do that. Maybe we'll have to do simplifying algebra, simplifying assumptions or quadratic equations. That's our next skill. But we're going to go through today just this first initial step here, this sort of baby step in terms of how we solve for x. Once you solve for x, then you actually need to then put x back in. So we'll go through all of those steps here, which are basically the last kind of steps in solving an equilibrium problem. So let's sort of return to this problem here. Okay, we've got this evacuated vessel, we've added carbon dioxide to a pressure of 0.458 atmospheres, and we form carbon dioxide. So here's the rest of the problem. It says at equilibrium, the total pressure is 0.757 atmospheres. Calculate Kp. So this is still a type 1 type of a problem. We're solving for an equilibrium constant, but we need to know what our equilibrium values are in order to do that. Right now, our equilibrium values from our ice table have x's in them. We knew that we're going to get rid of some of our carbon dioxide and make some carbon monoxide, but right now we don't know how much. So this is how we need to solve for x in order to get actual values for these pieces. All right, so how do we solve for x? Well, they told us here that the total concentration of gases at equilibrium is 0.787 atmosphere. Well, the only two gases there are at equilibrium are the partial pressure from carbon dioxide and the partial pressure from carbon monoxide. I don't know what those values are exactly, but I know what they are in terms of an algebraic term. So I'm gonna add these two together and that allows me then to be able to solve for x. So I'm gonna solve this little algebraic expression for x and I get x as 0.2. 299 atmosphere. All right, I want to just make sure to run through these steps again. I'm going to say them lots of times so we kind of get them up here. To do an equilibrium reaction, write a balanced chemical equation. Done. Write your equilibrium expression. We hadn't really done that yet, so that's a part here that I have here. Notice if we're writing this, it's going to be a Kp value because we're talking about partial pressures. I'm going to have the partial pressure of carbon monoxide squared over the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Okay, third step, make sure that everything is in the right units. We've got atmospheres that are here. The fourth step is making your ice table. That's what we did right here. The fifth step is solving for x. That's what we did here. And now we need to go back in, 
follow this logic and then we'll see it on the next slide. Now that I know what X is, I can put X in here to get actual values for my equilibrium concentrations. Then I can take those actual numbers and put them into here, and that will allow me to solve for K. So that's what we're going to see on the next slide here. Okay, so I know what X is. So now I can put that X in for my expressions here, and I can get concentration of CO and then concentration of CO2 at equilibrium. Okay, then I'm going to put those two pieces into my equilibrium expression, and here is the answer to my problem. That is the equilibrium constant for this reaction. Again, note that it has no units. So this represents two relatively easy ways to solve for your unknown. And in this case, both of these problems were type 1 problems. We were solving for the equilibrium constant. What we're going to see as we move on to our next skill is we're going to be doing work to use a provided equilibrium constant. And now what we're going to be solving for is our unknown equilibrium um, concentrations. So just to sum up, because I know this was an involved problem, let's go through those steps one more time and just kind of highlight what we have here. First step is always writing a balanced chemical equation. We had to do that from words that were provided in a chemical, um, uh, chemical problem here. Second step is making sure that you've got um, uh, an equilibrium expression that you can write, products over reactants. Third step, uh, making sure that all of your species are kind of in the right units atmosphere or molarity. Third step here is actually involving writing your, your ice table as well, but if you want to kind of label that a fourth, that's fine. Then we need to solve for x, so we solved for x here. Then we put those values of x back into our equilibrium expression to get actual values of those, and then we put that because this was a type 1 problem we were solving for k, we needed to put those values into this expression to solve for our k value. So we're going to have lots of time to practice these in class, but again, this is the big skill that we're going to see from this learning unit.